Yeah, uh, my name is Fozia. I joined Hustle when we were like, you know, the whole group was about 10 people and the advisors and tra translators were like six. Um, that was five years ago. And um, since then, I became an advisor. Uh, two people get paid at the moment. And uh, one person is getting paid two times, two days a week. And the other person, uh, which is me, is getting paid one day a week. But most of our work is based on volunteering and just participating and uh, giving what you know what your expertise is because we have translators as i said which is really really important with, uh, to our group as we have uh, arabic speakers somali speakers spanish speakers and uh, ethiopian um, uh, tigray speakers so it's really important we also have uh, uh, child care because when we were we used to meet face to face we used to get the children up to your side and get face painting or you know um just distract them from the main um uh advice giving to their parents so it was really important that to see people were coming all the way from north london to here and you know just help with them with just child care uh even if someone is not speaking at all any english they can still help with the group because we have some people who go to assessments like um, ESA assessment or to court, just accompanying that member is really important. Um, uh, so we have over 600 members on our WhatsApp group. Since then we have really grown and expanded. We have also volunteers who are um, uh, lawyers, uh, barristers, uh that know the, the 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 law really well and we have also every three months um uh trainings the main organizers are about 10 and we have um meetings that so that we can you know 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 the housing policies more better um every session we have also debriefing and discussing about you know what we have advised if it's correct if it's not correct all these kind of things and um uh in hustle what we do is like you know uh help people who, who may be facing eviction in many different ways we have uh but we don't let it get into the eviction uh stage because it will be really difficult. We have also, uh, we work also closely with lawyers, um, uh, really good housing lawyers that we can uh, signpost our members to. Hi, <laughs> yes, and um, uh, we have highlighted uh, cases on Twitter when so the council tried to evict someone from temporary accommodation. Um, uh, we help people do their homeless applications because some are, not good so good with uh, with with the internet in general or using computers um so we help also people with the welfare benefit because it can be like you know related if you are getting evicted from your private rented accommodation because of rent arrears there will be no use people applying to social housing because they will they will get be they will get rejected um, uh, and the main campaigns that we did this year is three. The most important was the Liberate Act. The Southern Council was saying um, our members, you know, they were, they're overcrowding. The statutory overcrowding, like severe overcrowding, was the Liberate Act, which was absolutely not the case. Um, uh, what we did is like, we uh, had a, a protest outside the, the Sadak Town Hall. We did also a postcard campaign supported by over 100 members during the lockdown because the lockdown we couldn't, you know, protest and go to the town hall. So we did it um, by email, and also we did um, uh, we emailed the the council leader, and 250 members did that. And we have also took legal action um, and our families, they have, uh, uh, they won the court case because in the Southern Council housing policy, it says 
if someone had a child is a natural occurrence, it's not a deliberate act, or some uh, or a child becomes certain age, then you will be entitled to extra room. But when our members, those families, when they go to the council, the, the council was saying to them, it's a deliberate act. The, the court ro uh, ruled into our family's favor. So we did like, you know, the postcard, the email, and um, also we contacted uh, Kieran Williams. And then eventually uh, the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the council leader, Kieran Williams and Stephanie Cryan, they had a meeting with us and they promised that that kind of things that they will never happen. Uh, we have the links and I will send it into the chat. And then the second main, main uh, campaign that we did this year is like uh, housing allocation policy. So the council and Louis Sham council, they decided to do housing allocation consultation policy because they were changing the policy and uh, they decided to do it in the last lockdown. So a lot of members uh, of our members from Lewisham and Southern Council, they didn't know because they put a, like a, a small uh, link into their websites and our members, they, 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 they didn't notice it. Even um, members of, the, of, the, of our community didn't notice it, even community leaders didn't notice it. So we had to do so many things, including um, coverage of our campaign in the local uh, press, also Zoom meetings with our members and explaining to them in, in their own language uh, what it means, what it is. It was really, really difficult thing to do, but we succeeded it. And some of our members, the elderly ones or vulnerable or disabled, they wouldn't be able to use Zoom. So we had a phone uh, consultations or one-to-one -one outside in the park because that was allowed at that time. Um, we also worked with law centers like Lewisham Law Center, uh, Southwark Law Center, PELC and uh, English for Action. We um, sent also our own responses and one time I remember in, uh, we had over 80 families in one Zoom uh, meeting. So we did our consultations and um, our own consultation because the Southwark and Lewisham consultations, there were no explanation at all, just ticking yes or no. They didn't include some, for example, like um, if you get demoted from your uh, position, what it will mean to you as a family, how will it affect you? So we included kind of those kind of things. Um, and we, Still, the consultation is not final yet, but we have seen the effect that we had on, on them because they, ha they had to change loads of things. That is why the delay that they that Southern Council is still facing because they, they promised that October, November, the a new uh, housing uh, uh, policy will be available and will be in force. But now they are saying until January, it will not be ready because the effect that we the all these like you know over 30 uh grassroots um charities have had on them including us and the last but not the least is the campaign that we did um uh, three four five bed family sized homes and we sent that open letter to robert generix and um 50 of Aquaba children, English for Action children, and Hustle children have um, a postcard sent to them to him. Uh, we have received an email, but we didn't have a chance to read it. <laughs> so um, uh, all our campaigns come from our group. The need at that time, and you know, because we have uh, so many. Uh, so much, uh, so less funding, and also we based on volunteering. So, but if our mem our members are facing something that affects them all, we you know address it and we try to um, uh, campaign on behalf of them. Wow! What great examples. Uh, that sounds really good. I really like um, the the levels that you're doing of different activity. First of all, to the um, to 
the council um, about um, rehousing people and then um, making sure that when they change policy that you campaign against them and say, look, this isn't on, that you've just done a link and people weren't given an opportunity to engage with it. And also that's really good that at the same time, you're still campaigning against Robert um, Jenick, who was the um, housing minister at that time. So that is great. You've got all these levels. And also I like the way that you've, um, without it being um, really um, like overwhelming, you've said, right, we're going to do that, A, B, and C, and you've broken it down into, um, right, we're going to send them that council emails, we're going to send Robert Jenick the postcards, and so that is really impressive, and this is exactly the sort of activities that I'm hoping we can inspire groups in Ealing and Hounslow to do, because it's about taking away the, oh, you know, we haven't, you know, where should we begin with the campaign? And we don't know what exactly we're gonna say, don't know who to send it to, and, and where do we start? And oh, it's gonna take so much time. But I think that's brilliant that you've able to do those different levels and different people, because it's all about chipping away. And um, that sounds really good. I just wanted to ask something about, um, if we go back to the first one you were saying about rehousing um, being overcrowded. And I, I was just interested in how the outcome of that. So that, um, because you said that um, families couldn't apply for social housing, which I think would be the same um, in Ealing and Hounslow because it's so oversubscribed. So, in terms of the council, uh, so it sounds to me like these might have been people in private rented accommodation who are receiving benefits and they needed the council to agree to um, increase their benefits so they could move somewhere else. Um, what I was interested in is about the benefit cap because we get a lot of people um, in Ealing and, and Hounslow and you know a lot of the time they're very desperate to find accommodation so they pay overpriced and um, it's all they can get so I've known people who are paying like a thousand pounds for a studio flat and having to um, house a family in that which is not ideal and then because of the benefit cap they can't um, increase their benefits to get what they need so how does it work in terms of the council and the benefit benefit cap? Yeah, exactly, uh, Toby, like the Deliberate Act was included in, in that point as well. Um, most of our families, you, they were renting uh, a studio flat when they came uh, to Sadak and um, closer to work, you know, saving, but their kids grow up. You can't, you know, just leave a bunk bed to <coughs> teenagers. So they went to the council and they said, we can't continue like this, please, you know, can you assess our situation? When the council assessed their situation, it was like, you know, um, it came up like that they, are, they were statutorily overcrowding. And statutorily overcrowding is a term that it's um, uh, uh, used as a severe overcrowding. And in Southern Council, it says, if you are severely overcrowded, you will be entitled to, into band one. And band one is severity. Like, you know, if you if someone has a severe disabilities or an, their life is in danger, or they are like, you know, um, uh, excessively overcrowded. So when the council looked at that and they didn't want, you know, overcrowd band one, they said is a, is a deliberate act, which was not the case. And the, the court of appeal, ruled into our family's favor. And they said they couldn't afford, this is the only property that they could afford because this is their income. And at the time that they, when they moved into that property, their children were still small uh, and the benefit cap and everything. What do you want, me, want them to do? Move to the countryside and work mm -hmm. in Sadak? So that, you know, we won in the, in the court of, of, of appeal. And so the council agreed that they will change the deliberate act and use it 
for example, if someone moves extra families or friends into their property and applies for a council property saying, look, I have so many people into my property, can you put me into band one? But that is why we had uh, Kieran Williams and Stephanie Cryan come to our meeting. And so I was also going to ask, when you um, send emails to the council, I'm just trying to work out like a, a timeline, say you, um, lots of families will send emails and would it be like over a week? And then at that time, do the council say nothing, nothing? And then you think, oh, let's send some more for another week. And then you start to get a reply from the council or do the council pick up the phone. At what point do does the council tend to engage or how, how does it work when? Yeah. yeah, yeah, when they tend to engage, it's like, you know, we had to send the emails within one week. And also we had to like, you know, uh, attend their meetings and ask questions. And so they knew us face to face and we used to go and protest and take over the town hall <laughs> so right. yes yeah, so they already knew us and um, one of the meetings that Kieran Williams went someone else asked do you work with you know do you know what is happening on 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 the ground do you work with the local charities the housing charities we can hear you that you're saying there is a housing crisis and then he said yes i work with the hustle that is why he contacted contacted us but right. they were not engaging at all right so in a way it's like a game isn't it that they will try and say oh yeah we, we work with them we know them it's like well you don't really and so it sounds like um you can send emails and tweets, but sometimes um, the best thing is to see them face to face and then you have to be quite strong and yeah. kind of really polite, but you have to kind of call them out a bit and say, okay, well, you said this, and you said that. So, yeah, yeah it sounds, it sounds um, this is why I think it's so important for groups to be confident, isn't it? Because that is the key. Because if you um, think, oh, I better not um, email this counsellor or they might not like it or, or I'm, not, I'm feeling nervous about going to this meeting or I better not say anything, they kind of almost hope that people aren't confident and don't call them out and don't say hang on you're doing this but you're not you know you have to be really kind of strong and that's why together that's why I'm hoping you know inspiring these groups today that together working together that they can even if it's just they will email each other or pick up the phone and say mm, I'm a bit nervous about sending this email and then another group can say don't worry you know we're here that's fine I understand what you're saying and that's why I'm hoping that you know they can connect to each other so if any of them have this sort of feeling of mm, I'm feeling a bit nervous about this that you have to feel so strong don't you so um yeah, well, it's amazing work you've been doing. Um, I'm just gonna want, I'm just gonna open it up and see if anyone has any questions. We've been joined by a couple more people. And we are recording this, which is great, so I can show to the other people. But I'd really like to open it up. And has anyone got a question for Fazia um, about her campaigning? Or yeah, anyone got any questions at all? Don't be shy, <laughs> please ask away, because, um, yeah, I mean, Hassel has done some amazing things. Well, let's put it to them, like, how is everyone feeling so far in terms of, I was talking about confidence, is everyone feeling positive and they, they how, do, how do people feel about sending an email to the council? Anyone feeling nervous, apprehensive? Julian, can I pick on you? Hi. Hi. Hi, my name is Hua. Uh, I'm working as a project officer uh, at EAS. So, uh, Fosia, she, she definitely spoke uh, 
different things what they are doing that's really appreciable they're working very hard so we are also working on different issues in fact the clients we are dealing every day most of the issues are regarding housing most of the people they have housing issues than others and not only in Hanslow, but in other councils like Lingden and uh, other councils also they're having the same issue so um yes most of the time we have to contact through emails with the housing officers uh and they reply back soon but the thing is uh housing issues are unlimited sometimes they are there is overcrowding sometimes people are disabled and they have health issues they want to move out they can't even survive with their own children and uh, uh i mean there are lots of issues sometimes they are homeless they're going to homeless and we have to advocate them to save their houses and uh, what well, there is a long list of the housing issues we are having anyway so apart from the housing we also have people with the welfare benefits mental health also one of our projects and many other activities are going on um relevant to the mental mental health and uh, what well, there are uh, we are also helping young people who wants to uh, who wants to go for another house who who, uh, who are having problems and we are also helping helping people with the with the tenancy agreement uh, if someone dies in their house uh, like someone uh, one of their parents dies and to just prolong the tenancy or to um, help them get a better house so there is a lot of uh, lot of issues that people are having uh, relevant to housing. Yeah. Sounds like you've got a huge um, mixture of, of issues, and um, I expect you're kind of wondering where you can focus on your campaigning when there's so many things to deal with, and when because people are so complex and things are intertwined yeah. with mental health it sounds like it's going to be quite daunting for you to know where to start but I'm thinking things like overcrowding is um, something very common um, for, for lots of people in, in Ealing and Hounslow so I'm thinking maybe if we just what I'm going to do is pick some topic areas for you and 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 I'll give you the contact details and we can start writing emails and things like that together. And um, yeah, so next week, well, no, this week on Thursday, we've got a session. I'm going to show everyone how to do Twitter. And then on the 28th, we're going to have a workshop here at West Ealing Library. And so we can work together and find some common themes and we can plan some campaigning. And also I'm going to be helping people if they've got any concerns at all they can talk to me or any if they're not quite sure about Twitter which is a great tool for really getting um, a light shone on on issues relating to housing and making sure and a quick um, those issues being resolved and addressed so I'll be showing you how to do that so um, yeah I think it'll be really useful um, because we've been doing all these sessions online and I'm looking forward to um, meeting everyone and, and working with them and face-to-face, um, -face, do a face-to-face -face yes. session. Yeah, the sessions are really helpful, no doubt, but I'm just uh, saying that people are having housing issues more than other issues. This is a very common issue these days and uh, the campaigns are very helpful indeed. Yeah, there's no doubt. So we are, yeah, uh, we are very keen into more campaigns and more, you know, uh, more trainings and more uh, meetings. That's a, that's already helpful, definitely. Uh, anyone else have a I question will, for Kelsey? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I would like to support uh, Huma uh, really. The problem they have it, uh, is not only Hanslow, also that we have a big problem. They come from Ealing and Hillendon, and most clients, they complain in the processing. The, also, they have a long, long waiting list. For example, in Hillendon, uh, and when I compare in Hillendon and Hanslow, Hillendon, people, they waiting for 10 years 
also when they finished 10 years waiting list, even they didn't get, you know, the housing and accommodation. But the, in Hannes law, it is more easier. The people, they wait in only five years. Sometimes it's shorter. But the problem is, it is uh, uh, the, uh, people, the population for the Somali community, they live in Ealing and Hanislaw and also the, in Hillendom. And most of them, we surfing in here in Elias and um, Huma, she's an uh, advice worker and she really helped, you know, the day and day. But uh, still, we need, you know, the, the our campaign and it's not only in housing, then also we want to complain in how they uh, give the contract. Because the, when they give the contract for the housing, like a housing association, the must attendance, you know, the people who are a, a community, they must there and the negotiation, who give the contract. And also when they built, you know, the house and, and the, uh, the government, they built for the, you know, the, uh, the people who are really needed. But when they uh, finish, they say we're selling them these houses. And, and the government, they supporting for the poor people. But then after that, the council, they say we're selling these houses. And that one is uh, we are the one who are campaigning now because the, the, we see in Hanslow so many houses they built now, and that house is empty, nobody there. And we investigate in uh, Hillendon the same thing too. We saw the houses is empty, and the people they are waiting list for ten years. Yeah, that's what we wanna you know the, maybe we can discuss. Uh, how do that one they uh, do in, uh, for the MP to influence the MP and, and the council? And uh, maybe we can discuss, you know, the when we see each other in the library and then yeah. in the next week. That sounds really good. And straight away, I was thinking that to make um, on Twitter or email um, pictures of the houses, um, the blocks of houses at night with no lights on is always a really good um to show that the, the evidence you can e email the pictures to um the council and say look that this tower block is you can see with no um lights on um so yeah i'm just reading what people like um oh, sounds good I'm just looking at that so yeah that's some oh, yeah mm. yeah we, we'll have we'll have a look at that um just looking and also i would say one thing um uh we had like you know we have to have uh, as a campaigners like you know the housing policy we have to know the local housing policy because um we are expertise in lewisham Sadak, and lambeth because they are next next um uh um uh Paris to our to to, to Sadak that we based in, um, we had a member who was bidding for nine years. That he was in Sadak, and when he came to us, literally within four weeks, he had a successful bid, because in Sadak is important that you have stars. If you don't have stars, even if you join today with if you have three stars on band three, you will get the property before anyone else. So the stars come if you are disabled, if you're working, volunteering, um, overcrowding, and uh, five stars uh, or social welfare or something. So if you don't have stars and the council will not give you or homeless star, if you don't um, apply separately to those stars and you are in band three, you will never ever go anywhere. And the council will, was not telling anyone that the, the, the stars were important, but our members, when they come to us, we will apply with them the stars. And once they get that, they will move, you know, and get the properties that they desperately needed. So the local housing policy is really, really important. And sometimes like Lambeth, you have to wait the time because it's not first come first serve. There is no such as uh, um, uh, stars or anything. When you join the housing list, if your banding is right, that is it, then it will be the waiting game. That is why we have like every three to four months at uh, housing policy training. Okay. 
Yeah, we've we've um, we've run some in the past, and um, in my toolbox on the website, we've got um, some training that I'll remind everyone. Um, yeah, we've got it in the toolbox about the housing policy for Ealing and Hounslow. So I will make sure everyone's aware of that because I think at the same time, yeah, this project we have um developed a toolbox of, of things like the training for the housing allocation policy and um so it's all again comes back to feeling confident that knowing that you're familiar with the policy you know how to help people um navigate it and then at the same time you can still do the campaigning but it's important to have all those layers of information that you feel confident on on one area so you can feel even more confident in in the other so hopefully this project is going to make sure that um yeah everyone is confident in in every part of everything to do with housing to make sure that they feel strong in in, in moving forward and um making sure they engage confidently with with the council or or um mps so i was just going to ask about you you mentioned an, an individual there who had a change um to their the housing as a result of it but i just wanted to clarify that when you do any of your campaigning you never actually mention individual cases do you because and that's the difference between sort of casework and campaigning. You might um, perhaps have um, a picture of that individual's house or something, but you never make reference to an individual in your campaigns or emails. You might use them to help um, the, the email or the tweet have impact, but you never actually mention individuals. Is that correct? Yes, because, you know, only that individual is not like, you know, only one that is having, that is facing that issue. Yeah. That, that person might be the most uh, courageous person that wants to, you know, be the, the face of our campaign. Um, uh, so it's really, really helpful, you know, to have like those individuals, for example, in Lewisham Council, they were, you know, um, demoting from the housing waiting list everyone that spends outside the borough in temporary accommodation over two years. And um, we had five members of our members uh, taking a legal action and we supported that. We were working with the uh, law centers and uh, we won against Lewis um, uh, uh, Lambeth uh, Council. And uh, those fi five families actions and our help and all the law centers and everything, over 800 families that even the, we don't know and they don't know us never came to our meetings, they have been uh, placed back into the bidding list. Yeah. So yeah, it's really, really important to have, uh, um, uh, you know, a group and, and, and a representer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a really good point that you raised about, um, an individual there will be you know for every one there could be like a hundred so it's actually people might think oh you know why am I um putting time and effort into campaigning when I have you know I've got time that I should be focusing on resolving this case but in actual fact that if you do put time in and effort into campaigns that then further down the road you can help more people because it's higher on the agenda and changes are made that affect a wider group of people. So yeah, it is actually uh, in a way more um, time efficient campaigning, but obviously that you can't kind of take, you know, your, your attention and, and support away from individual cases, but it can actually uh, help a greater number of people. Has anyone else got um, any more questions for Fazia? No, I don't think so. Well, it's been lovely talking to you, Fazia. Thank you ever so much for joining us today. It's very inspiring. And like I say, I've recorded this. And the next session I'm going to be running for these groups is some Twitter sessions on Thursday. So hopefully they're feeling like 
they're confident and they're up for it. And you've given us some great examples and we're going to get campaigning. So, um, Thank you so much for having me, Toby. And Twitter is really important. You know, our uh, general public might not be using it, but our politicians do use it yeah. and attack them. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really it's important. It's the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing everyone on Thursday at 10.30. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. I appreciate it. Yeah. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.